Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and the majority of my zine collection is now finally in a new storage solution. I recently moved apartments, and so I have a little more room where I can give my zines a more proper place on an actual shelf. My previous storage setup for all my zines was just a bunch of different shoe boxes stored on shelves or under my bed, which worked fine, but it wasn't the easiest to browse them and it wasn't the easiest to grab one zine that I wanted because, of course, it'd be at the bottom of the shoe box or something. And so I really wanted to try and uh, come up with a way that I could more easily browse my zines and have them a little bit more organized. So, um, my original plan was, you know those magazine file boxes, um, you know, just the cardboard ones? I wanted to do that and use something like that. Um, but the thing about those is that that displays all of the spines facing outward. Um, and it's kind of hard to actually see what the covers look like unless you take them out of the box, which I felt like would just have... A similar problem as the shoebox thing where I'd have to recognize the spines of them and wouldn't, uh, which, you know, I can for a lot of them, but, you know, I just wanted something a little better. So, um, I ended up instead making sort of a variant on that, which I will show you right now by turning the camera around. This is my variation. So basically I have these boxes that I uh, assembled out of priority mail shipping boxes, just the ones that you can get free at the post office. I mean, officially, it's like illegal to do anything except use them for priority mail shipping. So like, don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, but the neat thing about these, I'll just pull out a random box here, is that it's open this way so that when you pull it out, you can then flip through the zines from top down and see all the covers, which totally solves my, my problem of wanting a setup that um, allows me to see the covers. Uh, so it's basically the same as like those magazine file holders, but it's just cut in such a way that it's, uh, here, here's like an emptier one where we can see the box a little bit more. As you can see, it's just cut open that way. They're really easy to make. Um, I guess at some point I might try to put up some instructions or a video for how to actually make these. Cause I think that these has worked really well for zine storage. Um, but for now, I just kind of wanted to go over my categories, a little bit about why I decided to arrange them this way, and then uh, you can join me as I sort through the last big zine box that needs to be put away in, in these uh, boxes. <laughs> so the way that I decided to organize my zines, I have um, I've been thinking a lot about zine organization. Uh, not just for personal use, but also for my job. I am a librarian and I'm in charge of a zine collection at a public library. And um, I have been reevaluating the way in which we organize the zine collection for a lot of reasons, because I think that our current system, which is based primarily on, uh, it's, it's a subject-based thing. So you'll have a subject that's like, um, we have a comics section, we have a DIY section, we have science, we have um, politics, and they're all sort of categorized by the subject that the zine is written on. And it's a, I understand why we started that way, and it, it seems intuitive, um, but I feel like there were a few problems with that, um, that not only were um, sort of difficult to manage and difficult to actually put zines into, but disrespectful in a lot of ways to the um, variety and the free-flowing nature of zines, and also especially as soon as you got to things like identity labels. Um, I'm still working really hard on that, and I'll talk about it, but the point is that my uh, curiosity, I guess, and for uh, alternative ways of structuring a zine organization system that was more in line with the actual creative, um, free-flowing, um, 
unstructured nature of zines, uh, I mean, it's sort of difficult because information organization is incredibly structured. That's kind of the whole point. It's creating structures for organization. And zines themselves are um, really don't have to be structured. And that's kind of the beauty of it. And that's why um, that's why they're so that's why there's there that's why they can be so unique and that's why they don't have to conform to the standards of publishing is because um you don't have to make them sellable and you don't have to make them in a particular um easily definable category <laughs> um which is you know usually based on um on sellability <laughs> i don't know how else to say that but anyway for the library, I am using a different organization besides the one that I'm using here, uh, because this is an incredibly personal organization system. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go over this one. And basically what I've decided to do is, rather than trying to organize zines by topic or um, anything like that, I'm organizing them, as you can probably see, by general mood. And so it was basically just my idea of what mood am I going to be in when I want to re read the zine? Or like, what what tone of zine do I want to read right now? And that's kind of how I came up with these categories. So I'll just go over the categories really quick. Um, in this one, the first category is rad and anarchic. And this is basically like all of the uh, anti-capitalist zines, like anti-capitalist affirmations. You get uh, zines about zines, uh, like... Uh, a zine about writing per zines tell your own story because I feel like zine making is about anarchy. We have, or not just about anarchy, but just about like, I don't, I don't know. It just seems like it kind of fit in the mood of rad and anarchic. I have like stuff about archiving DIY um, histories. I've got um, stuff about urban gardening, growing in gardens, uh, just as kind of an idea of like, um, taking back green space and, and self-sustainability. I think that's a very rad concept. So this category, just the idea is anything where I feel like, man, I want to be radical. I want to do something cool. I really want to take back kind of my own, um, power and be reminded of, you know, ways that I can, live differently. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Uh, that's basically what I'm putting in here. Um, so you still haven't seen just like the brief covers of a bunch of zines. People of Color in History uh, is sort of another one where it's not necessarily about doing something, but just about um, decolonization and decolonizing history, knowing the land is resistance, an excellent zine. This one's downloadable for free. Um, so anyway, that's this one. And I sort of didn't show, but I also have a bunch of like smaller zines, quarter size minis sort of on the other side here. And that's the case for all of them, but I'm not going to bother going over them. So that's rad and anarchic. Um, these are sort of some special categories. The special occult is basically just zines that are a little bit, um, made a little bit fancier. <laughs> so but this is basically born because I have a collection of Fiddler's Green zines that I wanted to kind of keep all together. And I have some of these that are sort of nicer printings and um, not exactly the super homemade. I mean, they are homemade, but you, you, you know what I mean? Just like the, the fancier, fancier zines about occultism, which I, I have quite a few of. So it's sort of like these nice, fancy, series. Um, I've got the uh, Nottingham Horror Collective zines. I've got a whole bunch of Brian Cote Noir's zines in here. Um, and a bunch more little mini Fiddler's Green. And yeah, so I just did that to kind of keep all those together. And then the next category is Magic and Occult, which is basically, <laughs> yeah, everything that's sort of about witchcraft, occultism, supernatural, spookiness, paganism, um, anything. These ones I'm really excited about. I just got them, so I haven't read them all the way through, but Death Witchcraft by, let's see who this one was by, Yunnan, uh, Kirk, Cork Lord. Anyway, really cool. One and two. So basically, and I have a few other ones like, um, Eternal Nap. I have three, one, two, and three. Uh, it's not exactly magic or occultism. It's about, um, about exploring cemeteries, but 
it just kind of has a similar magical spooky uh vibe and again like the queer language of flowers isn't strictly about magic but um it's just something that makes me f that that feels magical to me i also have some stuff about magic history in here um I also have some stuff about gardening. I mean, like I said, it's sort of, it's almost hard to describe it as anything other than a feeling because that's kind of the entire point is that you can have two zines on gardening and one of them can be about sort of the, um, can be a more, a more spiritual explorative experience of being in a garden. And another one may be more of a, you know, DIY rad tutorial about how gardening can, uh, give you back a sense of self-sustainability and those those are kind of two different things like like when i'm looking for a zine i'm rarely going to be saying i want to read a zine about gardening i mean i might but usually it's going to be i want to read a zine i don't really know what zine i want to read unless i'm looking for a very specific one in which case i can i can usually remember where i put it um yeah so i just feel like this is more suitable for for browsing. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll move on here. Uh, relaxing are just zines that I feel that are just pretty chill or that, you know, if I want to just pick up and read a zine and not have to think too hard about it, then that's, um, what I can do. So I've got like, um, libraries I have known and mostly loved. I've got a uh, zine of the hill. I've got a Daria fanzine. So I've got some fanzines in here. I've got like, uh, Morgan Muffel, and a few other perzines that are just sort of diary style and really chill. Um, I feel like that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Next up, we've got upbeat and funky, which is just like all the, all the fun and fun and funky zines. So I've got some art zines in here. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, this is a zine about local metal. Um, what was that one called? Let's see. Are any metalheads actually know how to read uh, sticks? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to read those, so um, there we go. I've got, like, uh, Pencil Revolution, which is just sort of about um, pens and pencils. <laughs> I've got stuff about horror. I've got um, Nina's Scissors and Chainsaws in here because they're, it's just sort of like a diary comic, but it's a little bit more... Um, punky and funky and and something that I would put in relaxing. We've got uh, Six Sad and Beautiful. We've just, you know, a whole bunch of uh, like band basics about starting your own band. Uh, Chud Buddies, which is this really hilarious cruddy, mo cruddy movie zine. I've got some comics. Um, oh, and Thrifty Times. I love Thrifty Times. This is my collection. It's a local zinester who um, writes about all their thrift store finds and rates different thrift stores. And it's, it's just like such a fun little zine. Okay. Then I've got goth and moody. <laughs> so all of the, all of the sad and moody zines are in here. Like, um, Miles Taylor's poem, envisioning the opposite of violence. I've got this one. That's a story about a cat sort of exploring the other realms, which is sort of about, you know, a dead cat. And we've got some COVID zines in here, like Nina's confined. We've got, um, no gods, no mattress and my succulent concrete heart. Um, just like <laughs> stuff about depression, stuff about like, um, where's there? I know I have empty in here, which is a zine about your house burning down, <laughs> like someone's house burning down. And so, yeah, just all like the, all the really gothic and moody ones when I just really want to get emotional or read something deep. Uh, next up we've got punky and riot girl. <laughs> so, Again, this is this is all about the sort of like, I oh I have an additional copy of anti-capitalist information so that I put in here. Uh, same heartbeats is another Nina zine, and so you can sort of see what I mean of like, I put them in different categories where, although these are both perzines and they're by the same person, like, uh, the the particular issues of same heartbeats that I have just feel more punky because they talk about Nina's riot girl band and it just. I don't know. It just has a different feelings. So I put it in a different category stuff about punk music. Um, I've got Julie ruins the escapist artist. I've got, um, stuff about like gender queerness and just, 
yeah, the sort of punky gender and riot girl um, zines. <laughs> Here's another one I've been reading lately. Get Down Ladies, a feminist queer zine. I've got a bunch of copies of that. So, um, And then I have Crap Hound in the back just because it, it just feels fun and punky where it's it's got just a, a big giant collection of different images and yeah so just anything where I want to feel punky and cool uh and then I have a few unlabeled ones which I'll just go over really quick this one is and I'll probably label it them at some point but this one's just like my personal archive of all the zines that I have made I try to keep one of one of each of them in here just um for I don't know historical whatever just <laughs> you know so i so i don't lose them this is actually just a bunch of comic books that i have um area 88 is like an old uh an old manga and i have some tank girl and stuff uh this one is basically all the newspapery zines so all my copies of using um and of uh friday night in west what was this one west facing Anyway, so like all the ones that are basically just like a sheet of paper. And also I like to keep things that are like uh, about the artist or, um, you know, newsletters. I have a bunch of copies of a local arts and culture magazine called the Boston Compass. And yeah, so I just keep all those in here. And then this one is just sort of, <laughs> it, I call it my vintage zines thing. I wouldn't call them all zines, um, but some of them kind of are. So it's just like I have a bunch of old zines or like chat books or pamphlets or little little books from my grandma. So this is Talk Tidy, The Art of Speaking Wenglish, uh, Welsh English. Uh, we've got um, the second anthology of contemporary Alaskan poetry in which my great aunt is uh, featured and just like a few other random papers or zine-like things that I want to keep just for sort of archival purposes. Yeah, so that's all of them. And now let's go and go through the final box and I'll show you a little bit about my um, decision-making process. Okay, so I'm just sitting on my floor here on my rug and here is my big old shoe box of zines. And so I'm just gonna go through them one at a time and basically just put them in piles of uh, which category I want them to go in. So the first one is a uh, little Meet the Artist mini zine and I just got this a couple days ago and it's um Yoshu's Prince is the name of the uh art the artist's uh store and stuff and here's just like this really cute little fold out accordion style mini zine that I really like so that's probably gonna go in with the newspapers and papery ones so I guess I'll put that put that here this is the hardest part of like defining the categories to begin with. And then these two zines are ones that I got from that artist. This one is a mini zine anywhere but here, volume two. And it's just this collection of little art, uh, uh, little drawings of different places. And it's just really, oh, it's really pretty. Let me think. These sort of art zines are, can be sometimes hard to categorize. I'm going to put this in relaxing because I feel like this is, I feel like I'd, I'd want to read that when I'm, when I'm relaxing and just want to get like cute inspiration for different places. And here's another one. It's Queer Animal Friends, again, by the same artist, <laughs> um, which is drawings of queer animal friends. Uh, and this one I'm going to put in upbeat and funky because, I don't know, it seems self-explanatory. Here's one by Eli Adams, which uh, they all have a different, you can get a different cover depending on your, what, whatever astrological symbol you want, but it's basically, it's a bunch of sort of jokey horoscopes, <laughs> and they're really hilarious. I really like them. I could easily put this in Upbeat and Funky, but I'm going to put it in Magic and Occult. Um, just... I, Magic and Occult is kind of the one category where I have it mostly based on topic as opposed to mood. We got another issue of Thrifty Times. This is the latest one. <laughs> I love this cover. So that's definitely going with the others in Upbeat and Funky. Okay, here is 
thief zine, and I have issues five and six. Um, it's got this little, whoops, this little paper band around it, and it is so beautiful um, and artistic and and poetic and just <sighs> deep. Um, I'll just read off a little piece of it. Um, of this first one. It says, uh, where are you? Where are you? I am in the east, the east. Speak again. Speak soon. The babies are calling. They think their father is a schmuck and a slow coach, and he needs to hurry up and put his coat on and bring them things. His coat is all frayed because they climb all over him. They are angry. They are clenching their little fists. So, you know, it's sort of like an artistic poetic scene. I guess I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this in goth and moody honestly, because although it's super bright and colorful, I just think that the vibe of the, um, of the text is very gothic. And so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put this thing back around. I got Thief in a trade with the zine artist, which was, I always love being able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put both of these in goth and moody. Um, here's just another issue of the Boston Compass. So I'm going to put that in with the sort of newspaper -y paper ones. An introduction to anti-fascism. Fabulous and obviously goes in rad and anarchic. Um, this is the other issue, the first issue of my succulent concrete heart. I was wondering where that is, <laughs> where that ended up. My problem is like I had so many just stacks of zines everywhere that when I, when it came time to pack them for moving, I just kind of had to throw them all in, in wherever. <laughs> so this is going to go in goth and moody with the other one. Um, this is the first issue of Hard Femme. Again, I have the other issues uh, in Punky and Riot Girl, so that's going to go in Punky and Riot Girl, which do I not have a, a Punky and Riot Girl stack yet? I do not. So, Punky and Riot Girl. Um, cultural Appreciation or Cultural Appropriation, a zine on culture, respect, allyship, and racism. I really, <laughs> I really appreciate when people take the time to create something to um, educate white people and, and educate idiots, and, and I just, like, I've done that a couple times where I've, like, written a zine about transness that's sort of aimed towards cis people, and so I know how it, how hard it is to kind of rein yourself in a little bit and, and be able to talk about it seriously without putting people off. I mean, some people are going to be put off no matter what, but, you know, it's a whole different beast than just the pure self-expression of, like, you know, look at all this bullshit! <laughs> you know, there's sort of, like, you, you when you're writing for a different audience, you sort of tend to write a little bit differently, and I, I appreciate so much how much, how much work goes into doing that um, for the sake of education. Anyway, so I'm going to put this in uh, with Rad and Anarchic. Let's see. This is Far Too Fat, which is this really great zine. It's a collaborative zine just about, um, about fatness. Like, people uh, contributed articles. And this is... Let me think... I'm not entirely sure whether I would want to put this in Punky and Riot Girl or Rad and Anarchic. I think I'm going to put this in... Mm. See, that's the thing, is like Punky and Riot Girl and Rad and Anarchic are kind of similar, um, similar subjects. I think... I'm going to put this in Rad and Anarchic because some of these are just so deep and personal that, like, I need to prepare myself when I'm reading it because they talk about actual, um, I don't know, they can, they can be very, I don't want to say triggering exactly, but, like, I need to be in the right headspace for it, um, because a lot of it is too, is, is very relatable personally, which is a good and a bad thing. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this in Rad and Anarchic. Oh, here's another one by, uh, Jam. We did the scene trade where we each gave a whole bunch of little zines. This is a mini zine that's drawings of urban spaces and alleys. 
which is so rare. I love doing that too, of just drawing, drawing personal urban spaces. So this I am gonna put in, um, I'm gonna put this in relaxing. Uh, Frit Knot, I've got a couple of these. It's this really interesting artsy collage zine. And I got these in a trade as well. So I'm going to put these also in relaxing. Just because that's sort of something I like to do when I relax is just flip through and look at art. <laughs> I have a lot of art zines going into relaxing right now. Oh, this is, okay, this is Dungeons and Doggies by uh, Molly Froge, uh, which is like this really cute art zine about... Um, dogs as Dungeons and Dragons characters and sort of a dog based Dungeons and Dragons like world. Uh, I'll put that in upbeat and funky because <laughs> it just, it just picks me up every time. This is the wolves. It's another art zine. Uh, I mean, not exactly an art zine. It's, it's an art, art and literature zine. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty deep because it's sort of about, um, I don't know. It, it's just, it's about like a natural world about, about falling through ice and a lot of, um, I don't know. It's, it's deep stuff. So that's going to go in with, uh, goth and moody. Cause it's definitely kind of moody. Um, cat lady and confessions, which is an instance of the, uh, manifest zine. I have a few others of those. Um, it's so cute. It's so good. Uh, like this is just one of those really super pretty zines like the borderless fancy printed kind with all these pretty images like it's just so nice to flip through <laughs> the first the first page here it's the author Jen Payne talking about um the finding this cat lady action figure and um the first text is talk about manifesting they hadn't yet come out with the action figure when i was first called the cat lady <laughs> um yeah let me think where would i want to put this see the thing is there's actually a lot of really deep poetry and uh sort of musings in here that like serenity this morning at two while a wet snow formed heavy burdens and the things i cannot digest bo boiled bile to a froth i awoke choking words and here's that i'm gonna put this in relaxing that's where i'm gonna put it okay this one i don't even remember how i got this i think it was because the the college it was north store call it north Okay, make sure, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Okay, I'm, I'm confusing this with something else. But anyway, it's, like, it's a, it's a collage collective where it's a collaboration of a bunch of Minnesota-based collage artists um, that each contributed to the scene. And I got this for free somewhere because they were offering free copies and I was like, oh, free zine? I'll totally, t I'll, I always, always take a free zine. So I guess... I'll put this in, um, I'm going to put this also in relaxing, I guess. Art zines are, are tricky. And here's, it's about time, the manifest zine. Uh, this is another issue of, of the manifest zine. Um, and the funny thing is like this one, you could say it's basically, it's very similar to the cat lady zine, but just on a slightly different theme and different topic about time. Um, it's again, it's more, it's, it's poetry, it's images, it's prose, it's thoughts, it's, it's a lot of different things, but just the, the topic about time is always something that feels very magical and, and strange and mystical to me. I don't know how else to put that, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this in magic and occult. <laughs> so like I said, it's very, it's a very personal vibe based thing. Uh, here is Reserve and Renew, uh, the LIS, uh, Library and Information Science Mental Health Scene, which is a really great collaborative, collaborative thing. Anyway, so I'm going to put this in with Rad and Anarchic because that's where I have the other ones. I also, I have a lot of, like, self-care stuff in Rad, Rad and Anarchic. 
Okay. Let me make sure I remember which one this is. Sometimes I just keep it in the, uh, in the envelope if I really like the envelope. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is from another trade that I did of, um, a queer zine. I have something to say, which is really great. <laughs> it's a, a per zine about queerness, creativity, and being your most amazing self. And the, and number three is on growth change and becoming your best self. Um, okay. I can't remember right off the bat where I have the other, uh, the first issue of I have something to say. So I'm going to set these aside and look that up in a minute. Um, oh God. And this one, I like, don't even remember getting this one. I never, I never managed to read it. This is the problem with having just like, uh, shoe boxes is that things get lost so easily. And this is so rad. Okay. So this is apparently, um, stapled spine number five. And it is this super cool, like horror -y, sort of like Persian interviews about horror stuff. And like, it reminds, it's just reminds me a lot of my first Persian. Um, holy crap. Well, okay. I'm going to put this in upbeat and funky and definitely I'm going to have to, um, take a closer look at that one. Cause I never managed to read it. Alrighty. Let's see. Um, I've got a few just random like postcards and things that I'll deal with later. This is one from the Wigglebird mailing club, which I was a part of for a little while. This is, um, Sarah and the cave rainbow. And it's this really weird kind of deep, like, uh, thing about that it's sort of surrealist and it talks about this idea of the of the cave the cave rainbow is sort of like this I don't know it's like it's like God but not exactly God and um it speaks in a very strange way and God I don't even know how to describe this sort of thing <laughs> it's just it's trippy it's surreal it's really weird. Um, I'm going to put this in goth and mood. Yeah, I'm going to put this in goth and moody. Uh, if you ever have read that online um, multimedia story, um, that uh, 17776, then this has a very similar vibe to that. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and put it in goth and moody. Um, okay. So I've got a few things from, uh, Foxy, uh, that I got in trades and it's, uh, Anthropomorazine and I have a few other ones too. This is Voop and they're basically like, they're anthropomorphic, um, or animal based comics and, uh, furry art. And, um, I got them in a trade with Tiffany Fox, the, uh, the creator slash compiler for these. And so I'm pretty much going to put all of these in upbeat and funky. So those are, that's over here. And I know here, I have another one right, right here at the bottom that I'll just pull out. Here's like a cover of the cover of Anthropomorzine. So I'm going to put that in upbeat and funky. Okay, here we go. Okay. So this was a zine that I helped, uh, I helped the creator or organizer put it together. And basically it's a, a Chinese New Year zine that was done by, it was like a, a group event for uh, members of this uh, senior center in, uh, and it was written initially in Cantonese. And uh, it's just really cool where they each made their own little uh, page to talk about their memories of, uh, the new year and year of the tiger and just be able to celebrate year of the tiger and the creator or the, the organizer of this zine pulled it all together and made an English translation. And I believe there was another zine that was written in Mandarin that also had an English translation for the sake of, um, contributing both the original language and the English translation to the Watertown Free Public Library zine collection. And I'm very privileged to have a, an extra copy of the English edition. And I'm, it's just so pretty and so upbeat and like, and, all, and so many of these people had never 
made a zine or contributed to a zine before. And it's so, it's so cool. It's so fucking cool. So I, I helped gather a few resources for that. And now I get to keep this zine. So that's going also in Upbeat and Funky because it's just such a feel good. Uh, here's another Frit. I think I called it Frit Knot before. It's Frit Cot. Anyway, that's, that'll go with the other ones. Um, okay. Let me know if there's anything I can do. <laughs> this is, um, by, uh, Mick Morin and it's basically just, it's, it, it's the difficulty of like, of being disabled or depressed and having people say, let me know if there's anything I can do because they don't really have anything else to say. And so it's sort of half talking about how it's really, it's really tough because on the one hand, you know, it's a nice gesture and a lot of times you actually do have difficulty asking for help, but it's also kind of empty and it doesn't really, it doesn't really help anything. It's like, it's putting all the onus on the person now to have to figure, it, it, it's doing the exact same thing. If it, it basically just does nothing. It sort of makes you feel better and assuages your desire, or your guilt of wanting to be able to do something, but it's still up to the person to now have to navigate the whole thing of, okay, so what's reasonable for me to ask? What would actually be helpful for me? I don't know. Like actually, you know, going through all that stuff in your mind is, is difficult enough in itself. So I don't know. It, it, it means a lot to me and I really like this. I'm putting this in Rad and Anarchic and I totally fucking relate to that. Um, here is another one for Rad and Anarchic, a self-defense study guide for trans women. And this is actually like legitimately helpful where it talks not only about, um, physical self-defense, but also about, uh, de-escalate, de, de, de escalation and, um, just generally like preserving safety and it's specifically aimed for trans women. So, um, I believe, uh, they offer free or cheap, uh, copies of this for, um, organizations that, would be able to distribute them to people who need it. And, uh, it's really fabulous and you can get it, I think for a donation based thing. I know there's sort of a special way that you can get this, but you can look it up through silver sprocket. So that's going in red and anarchic. Um, <laughs> here's another issue of my perzine, which always manages to get in there somewhere. Okay. Here's like another sort of magazine newspapery kind of thing, an issue of razor cake that, I got for free with something and now I have it. So <laughs> that's going in with paper. Okay. This one, these two were, um, the, these two are basically, I'm trying to find what the title of these were. Refugee art project zine by Murtaza Ali Yafari. And, um, there's two, this is number four and the other is number three, I think. And basically they're collections of arts, uh, made and, and some prose made by refugees in, uh, detention camps and just on, um, on their way to fleeing, fleeing from Syria. Uh, really deep, important stuff. And I just like, here's, here's like a really meaningful spread. I really like it. I'm going to put this also in rad and anarchic. Um, it's intense, but it's just, it's it, but it is, it is rad. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Okay. Uh, this is uh pochi by cat moth crow who has a YouTube video. I mean, not just, not just a YouTube video, a YouTube channel with many YouTube videos on it, um, which is their quarantine zine. And it's sort of a, it's just like a, um, it's, it's a diary, but it's all, it's kind of goth. It's kind of moody because it's talking about just a lot of the weight of the world shit that happened during the pandemic. So that's going to go in goth and moody. Um, goth Gang, a memoir, an anthology of the memoir series about growing up goth in the late 1980s. <laughs> I so love this one. Um, and the funny thing is like, it probably, it, it could probably go in goth or in punky, just based on the mood. I'm going to go ahead and put it in goth. 
Uh, here's another issue of Liver Mortis. I have a bunch of these that I got in a trade, which is this really fabulous urban photography zine. Really like it. Um, this one in particular, I'm going to go ahead and put in Goth and Moody. Uh, this is number 13, titled Mo Honey, More Mo Problems. Um, and just because it's all, it's very, it's very dark and grim, this one, so I'll put that in. Oh, wait, that's right. Uh, put that in Goth. Uh, this is another liver mortis zine, or, or was gathered from, yeah. It's a photos and layout by liver mortis zine. Yeah. Which, this one is titled Shut Up, and I'm going to put that in the same one, because it's a lot of, it's a lot of, like, dark and moody graffiti. Um... Berkeley Muse. <laughs> uh, this is one of the first zines that I ever got, um, which is basically just like, it's a self-published newspaper comic kind of zine, so that's going to go in Upbeat and Funky. Plastic Knife, I, a number 17. I think I already have number 17. Um, I'll just put it in the pile for newspaper stuff for now. Uh, Mathematics for Misfits, I guess. I'm going to put that in relaxing. That is not relaxing. Um, where's relaxing? Relaxing. Uh, this is a zine that I found at a little free library called The Distance by Sophia Wood. And um, it's another, it's another poetry zine and it's kind of, it's pretty deep. Um, and it, it looks like a poetry zine. I don't know how else, how else to put that. Um, so that's going to go in um, Gotham Moody. The Escapist Artist by Jolie Ruin. I have a bunch of these and I really like all of them. And these pretty much all go in Punky and Riot Girl for me. Let's see. Who Does This Benefit? A really good zine that basically just... It, it asks that question of... Um, I guess you could almost... Okay, I was going to put this in Rat and Anarchic, and I think you could, but I think I'm actually going to put it in Punky and Riot Girl. Um, a lot of it is sort of... It's about... Um, it's about body image. It's about um, feminism. Like, there's one one title called On Letting Women Be Bitches, and I think that, that kind of summarizes why I feel like it should go in um, Punky and Riot Girl. Uh, let's see. Rum Lad... And, oh, Wormlad and Gadget. Okay, yeah, so this is a uh, dual zine, uh, if you've ever seen one of these, where it's two zines, one on each side. <laughs> really neat. I think for this one, it's sort of a, um, it's a per zine, sort of part in comics, and the other one is part mostly in text, and I'm going to put this in relaxing. Relaxing. Okay, this is uh, Shoes Fanzine number eight, and again, I just got this for free at some point that I can't really remember, and it's talking about um, sort of the, how, how do I put this, like the, the um, punk underground, um, like the first one is called Will vs. the Neo-Nazis, the story of anti-racist action. Um, it has sort of a, an interview with the creator of Aaron Comet, uh, the creator of the zine Comet Bus. I'm going to put this in rather than Arctic. Okay. Forever and Everything is just like this little, uh, diary comic kind of thing. I'm going to put it in relaxing. 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 <laughs> I am like, I'm losing my, relaxing. I'm losing my brain here. This is um, actually just a paper that I wanted, which is sort of the philosophical aspects of information science. Uh, that I think doesn't really need to go in with zines, but I guess for now I'll just stick it there. Um, okay, you're so exotic. Whoops, I picked up two. You're So Exotic by Glittering Magpie is such a... Oh god, it's like some of the bullshit that they've heard as an Indian uh, Canadian. I think that they were from Canada, but you know, as an as an Indian person in Canada 
and it's stuff like, you're so exotic. I wish I was a uh, cultural like you. Like, ugh. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I am gonna put this in Punky and Riot Girl, I think. Heyday Comics, another little comic that I got while I was in Berkeley. Put that in Relaxing. I've got uh, The Depressed Waitress, which is sort of a philosophical zine. I don't know how else to put that, but it's it's really cool. It's super long. Um, and it's got, it's art and art and text and poetry and articles and yeah, um, I'm gonna put this in with gothic stuff. Psych Trauma and Recovery, that's gonna go in Rad and Anarchic. Metanoia, this is a self-care, uh, mental health and self-care strategies, this is issue six, and that's from Microcosm Publishing. Um, also gonna go in, uh, Rad and Anarchic. Um, this is Nyx's 24 hour zine thing. I have a few other Nyx zines, uh, Nyx of, of sea green zines. And I'm gonna put this, let's see. I'm gonna, mm, I'm gonna put this in relaxing even it, it, cause it kind of talks about a lot of really deep things. But I think there's almost this sort of distance that makes it more approachable. And I don't really know how else to put that, but I'm going to put that in relaxing. Um, here's issue one of Reserve and Renew. That's going to go in Red and Anarchic. And issue two of Reserve and Renew. <laughs> also in Anarchic. This fucking fabulous zine is a comic that reminds me a lot of my comic Gavin Claiborne and Jimmy Lee and this is called Postcards from Rat City. I got this in a trade at last year's zine fest in Watertown from Jenna Miles the creator and it is so cool. It is a bunch of rad punk anthro goth animals and I just fucking love it. Um, so the funny thing is like the mood of this is actually probably closer to it's sort of like halfway between goth and punk. I'm going to put this in um I'm hmm, I'm tough. This is this is tough. It's it, it's either like relaxing, upbeat and funky or punky and riot girl. And I'm going to put it in relaxing. Maybe. No. No, I'm going to put... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um... I'm gonna put this in upbeat and funky just because it reminds me so much of my comic that like that's where I would put my comic so that's where I'm gonna put this upbeat and funky upbeat and funky and I think that is it that is the entire box the rest of this is just like a few random papers that um like this paper that I like handing out with zines and some other stuff so I'll Take that out, and that is an empty box. <laughs> so uh, that just goes to show a little bit of my organization thought process. Uh, I hope you enjoyed getting to see a few more zines for my collection, and I will see you guys later. Uh, oh, I I also wanted to say that I hope this that I hope this encourages you to um, be willing to think outside the box of, in uh, terms of how you organize your information in general and uh, thinking about creating categories that are more suited to both how you would look for things but also more suited to um, accommodate the uh, nature of whatever it is that you're organizing. And so for zines it's really important for me to uh, accommodate and be respectful of the rather um, open and free-flowing nature of zines. <laughs> so um, 
I'm sure I will talk about that more, but it's one of those things where it's like, I've been doing it for work. And so when I get home, it's kind of like, all right, I don't know how to talk about this. I don't want to talk this anymore. <laughs> I just want to make some tarot videos. <laughs> anyway, I will, um, I will see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. My legs asleep. I don't know how people can sit cross-legged for so long. My leg falls asleep, like, immediately.